So, are there ways in which we can reduce the time and the effort that we're spending on our residents' transport needs? This is the management team at River Glen, a rural aged care facility in the northwest of the state. They are meeting to discuss the challenges of supporting medical care for their residents. Bruce Ware is the Chief Executive Officer of River Glen. Emma Pierce is the Administration Manager. And Helen Can is the Director of Care. One of our major concerns is um, the transport issues for our residents. We have seven residents who we have to more frequently book medical specialist appointments for in Hopeton. And if the consultation is urgent, sometimes they need to travel much further distances. Each visit is tiring and stressful on the resident and it's time consuming for us and our volunteers. Mm. We're expending a lot of energy and resources. Surely there's an easier way of providing this care. I think I know where this is leading. For one of our high care residents, Patricia, her specialist isn't even in the state. He only flies in twice a year. And you're going to tell me that someone like Patricia um, can be put in front of a computer screen? Yes. We think that telehealth video conferencing can help residents like Patricia. They'll be able to more conveniently access their medical specialists and allied health services when a face-to-face -face appointment isn't necessary. I doubt whether Patricia would conveniently deal with, um, with a, a computer screen rather than a, than a human being. One of our nurses, or another member of staff, would be with Patricia to manage the meeting at our end. Wouldn't Patricia think this kind of video consultation is better than spending four hours in a car for a 15 minute appointment? But that's not going to help those other residents whose specialists are not willing to participate in video conferencing. No, you're right. And specialists and allied health workers do often want to meet face to face with their patients. Telehealth video consultations will complement face to face meetings. They won't replace them entirely. Okay, but will the technology be used sufficiently to warrant the expense of the purchase, the planning, the staff training? I think we could find that this could end up with, with be more costly for us than if we provided the residents with all their transport needs. I've been doing some estimates and I think this may be a less expensive option. The technology itself shouldn't be too expensive mm. to set up. Are you then suggesting that perhaps we use emails and telephone servers? No, of course she's not, Bruce. Clinicians and patients need to see and talk to each other. Here, this might help explain. Telehealth services are about transmitting voice, data, images and other information between care recipients and health professionals without the need to travel. Helen's copy of a Telehealth Access Made Easier newsletter presents the options for telehealth service delivery. It also outlines the incentives. The Commonwealth Government currently provides money to help residential aged care facilities install equipment and use it for consultations. I don't want this to be a waste of time and money. I don't want a whole load of fancy equipment stuck in a room we're not going to use. Neither do we, Bruce. We think it will be used if we set it up properly and have the right processes in place. If we go ahead, we can use the equipment for other things too. We can use it for... to collaborate with other rural aged care facilities. We can use it for video conference meetings with organisations around Australia. Our staff would have training without having to go away to... The oh, well, all right. Uh, all right. Let's look then at providing a telehealth service at River Glen. What are our next steps? Well, I can get more detailed information on the technology requirements and costs. I can also look into how we access government incentives mm -hmm. to set up and use it. Okay. 
Yeah, no, that's, that's great. But once you've got the numbers, we can then incorporate this into our business plan. Then we can decide on what service provider and the equipment that we will need. And we need a plan to manage the service as well. I think we should bring it in in stages, ease it in so our staff and residents get used to the idea of video conferencing. Well, it looks like we're agreed then on telehealth servicing it at River Glen. I think it has potential. Let's make sure we realise that potential. Now, about our next meeting then. Um, when are you available next week to do some planning? Um, Monday, Monday morning's good for me. Mm, me too. I've got a meeting at... This has been an example of how managers at a rural aged care facility might consider using telehealth. Here's a summary of the advantages discussed. Telehealth can reduce travel for residents and staff. It can be more convenient and less stressful for residents. Telehealth can provide residents with access to health professionals who otherwise may not be available. Telehealth may provide cost benefits to residents and the facility. Telehealth may be less demanding on staff and volunteers than assisting residents with their travel. Finally, telehealth technology can be used for more than consultations. For example, video conferencing can be used for meetings and staff training.